you mentioned global warming. See, it's very interesting the way that's portrayed in the media. It's portrayed as if there's two sides. You know, we have to be objective, so 50% for each. Uh, one side is like 99% of scientists. Uh, the other side is uh, Rush Limbaugh, Sarah Palin, Jim Inhofe, and you know, three guys that they kind of contrarians in the science community. So we give them equal time. And then how's the ordinary citizen going to figure it out? Actually, the New York Times had a front page story a couple of days ago about the very interesting controversy that's taking place between climate scientists and what they call meteorologists, the people who appear on television to tell you whether it's going to rain tomorrow. Uh, and they differ. So how's the ordinary citizen going to figure it out? Well, you know, you don't want it. First of all, it should be pointed out that there's actually three sides. There's not two. There's the, you know, the the mainstream scientific consensus, and there's two groups that, of denialists. One of them is the one that's given equal time, you know, Senator Inhofe, Rush Limbaugh. But there's another one, which is very significant. Uh, major groups of scientists who think that the uh, uh, mainstream analyses are nowhere near grave enough. Uh, they're all, it's very serious work. I mean, MIT just came out with a big study, their scientists saying, the reality is far worse than what's predicted. Well, they're not part of the debate. Okay. So what's the ordinary citizen going to do? Well, he's not going to become a climate scientist. But you know, the choices in this case are so transparent that it doesn't take a lot of work to figure it out. I mean, what's the chances that uh, you know, the overwhelming majority of climate scientists from all over the place, uh, either the ones who say it's very grave or the others who say it's even worse than you claim, uh, what are the probability that they're wrong and Rush Limbaugh's right? You know? I mean, it's, it's not a hard decision. You don't have to be an expert. And there's another point to be made about all of this. Uh, if, if you try to think through the cost-benefit analysis, suppose the people who deny it are correct and you do something about it. Okay, you've spent some money doing things you probably should have done anyway. You know, like more renewable energy and so on. Uh, but the, the total cost is it cost you something. Suppose, on the other hand, that the consensus is right. Well, if you don't do anything, uh, human species is probably down the drain. Okay, those are the costs you have to estimate. That's not particularly subtle. <laughs> Now it's too late to prevent really massive change, but not too late to prevent the worst kind of tipping points. I mean, we've already increased moisture in the atmosphere about 5%. The ocean's about 30% more acidic. Uh, we're seeing deluge and flood in kind of unprecedented mm -hmm. ways. Um, um, these are very dangerous, powerful things that we're not going to be able to push back into the closet. Um, but... Uh, Everything's relative, and it can get a lot, lot worse than that if we don't wise up pretty soon. We haven't done all that good a job of organizing people who, I think that environmentalists have counted on the fact that they were right uh, to do the work for them. Uh, we had, for 20 years, the kind of superstructure of a movement. We had scientists and policy people and engineers and things. We just never had any movement. That was the part we left out, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been trying to build at 350.org with some success over the last year, both here and around the world.